Uh, my name's Tyler Kinn. I'm a, a junior faculty member at uh, Central Connecticut State University, and today I'm going to be talking about um, the Hodge Trail, which is a project that I sort of started developing during my PhD years at Yale University, essentially taking my dissertation research on the Ottoman pilgrimage to Mecca in the 17th century, the many, many sources I'd gone through for my dissertation, and transforming that into an educational simulation. Essentially, the Hodge Trail sort of takes its form or sort of its concept from the Oregon Trail, if you know of it, the classic uh, educational video game of the 1990s uh, that sort of every uh, sort of American public school had to play. Um, and ironic, I did not know this till much later on, developed by uh, the state of Minnesota Department of Education. I'm from Minnesota, I did not know this when I was a child, that it was like a state project. Um, but nevertheless, the, the vague form, if you know the various outline of the Oregon Trail, that's the sort of the format that we took with sort of t basically taking lots of the research that I had done on the 17th century Ottoman pilgrimage to Mecca and then transforming it into an educational simulation. And you can find it at uh, hodgetrail.com. It's browser-based and built through Twine. So the Hodge Trail itself um, is browser-based, free-to-play, text-centered historical simulation. Um, in a genre of sort of a choose your own adventure with the goal to introduce students to the cultural and social history of the Ottoman world. Too often the Islamic world is presented uh, through games or through media, only through violence, warfare. The Ottomans are just always associated with cannons and gunpowder, and that's really all you have for the popular imaginations of the Ottomans in the past. The Hodge Trail is sort of a way to try to introduce students to the other factors that sort of make up the early modern Ottoman world, the 17th century, the Pax Ottomanica, the Ottoman peace, and to showcase the different stories and narratives that are present in the social history of the Ottoman world through the lens of a journey to Mecca. Um, particularly the sort of the whole idea around, around the simulation is not necessarily about the education about the Hajj practice itself in Mecca, but rather about the journey through the Ottoman Empire and the introduction to the cultural and social history of the Ottoman world. The whole idea around the project sort of stems from one of the core sources from my own research on the 7th century Ottoman pilgrimage. There is a document which you can see on the background here. This is an Ottoman manuscript from Sarajevo in the Ghazi Husserv Beg library in which it shows it's, um, an itinerary from Sarajevo to Mecca in the early 18th century. Uh, the account is pretty sort of normal in terms of the genre known as Menesi Kolhaj, or a guide for pilgrimage, where it will be a book with a bunch of prayers for what you're supposed to do in Mecca. And then at the end, they'll have an itinerary of every single stop they went to. So basically every single town from Sarajevo to Mecca over a three month journey and how many hours of travel it took to go between each of those places. And in the simulation in Sarajevo, this is the exact amount of travel or time that the entire game mechanic is based on. So when you travel in the game on the main route from Sarajevo to Mecca, you're going the exact length of time that Yusuf Rumi, this 18th century pilgrim, took through his same route. Um, and there's this way in which this account sort of I think encapsulates why the medium of a simulation for an educational tool to talk about the Hajj is much better than simply the written word or a text or a book that I can write about the 17th century pilgrim Mecca. Yusuf's Rumi account is sort of defined by this sort of very sort of minute detail of going from stop to stop to stop to stop on the long road from Sarajevo to Mecca. And along the way, you'll see on the side here, there's little marginal notes written the side of each location. And in these locations, it will be sort of little notes to a future user of this book that will say, there's a good inn here, or you should stay here, some advice, common advice for travel. And as he gets closer and closer to Mecca, particularly to Syria and the Arabian desert, he encounters for the first time in his life, the desert and an environment and a climate vastly different than the lush green valleys of Bosnia from where he's from. And his notes on the side begin to change from just advice on places to stay, people he knows in different cities, to all being about water and the lack of it. Su yokter, or there is no water here, becomes a common theme, as we'll say, 15 hours in the desert, next stop, there's no water here. 15 hours in the desert, next stop, there is no water here. 
And this repetition sort of defines his journeys and experience as he's traveling across the early modern world and encountering this sort of culture shock or climactic shock as he travels through the space. And there's a way in which I could assign in a class students to read 17th century Ottoman pilgrimage narratives, and they'll just read through to three to four minutes what it was like to travel in the Ottoman world. And they say, hey, look, there's no water here. That's it. Finish up my assignment and go home. The whole idea of a simulation is that you are able to play with time in a way that a writer cannot. Uh, through the Hodge Trail, students to get to from Sarajevo to Damascus and south of Damascus to the desert crossing takes about two to three hours of gameplay for most students on average of how long they take. You can speed run it, but how long, how long it takes them to get there. And there's this way of investment, even through a small sort of contribution of time, that they've invested two hours of their time to get this place to suddenly find there's no water here and they haven't prepared and this sort of sudden shock to the system of this climactic change around them helps them to better connect through the basically the Frankenstein version of pilgrimage narratives that the game is based on, where basically everything that you encounter in the simulation is based from basically about 15 different 17th century, 18th century pilgrimage narratives. And so you're experiencing basically different stories and different cultural stories from the Ottoman world as you go through uh, this sort of reimagined landscape of the past. And then you experience the challenges of distance and time in a way that simply assigning a reading or a primary source cannot convey. And so one of the sort of quotes that I like to always think about in writing is Ferdinand Brudel, the historian of the Mediterranean, always says that the sort of greatest challenge to empire was distance or distance and time. And in many ways for history writing and understanding the past, that's also a challenge, that we cannot play with time in writing or the traditional means of talking about history in a book or through other means. But through games and simulations, you have an ability to play with time and represent time and use that variable to try to sort of tell the stories of the past in a different way. Um, so some of the sort of outlines of sort of what went into the Hodge Trail or the thought processes around it, basically turning this research into something that my students can use in the classroom. Um, Seeing gaming as a sort of great medium, obviously from its very beginning with like the Orion Trail and other games, as a great venue for telling the stories of mobility, distance, and time. Um, Choice-based learning as something that's to my read, number of articles has <laughs> shown to be they're very effective, effective and impactful. I've seen this in my own classes where students that are much less engaged in other material we're talking about, they go through the Hodge Trail as an assignment and then they are incredibly engaged with that. Unfortunately, maybe that says more about my teaching that the other things are less engaged with. But, um, and then also providing a different perspective of the early modern Islamic world, which is often not represented in positive lights in modern media. And many of our students walk into the classroom with these incorrect imaginations of the Islamic past, um, stereotypes about the Islamic world that can hopefully be shaken or reimagined through in, through an engaging simulation that we hope to so hope to have created with the Hodge Trail. Um, so we use, as many of you know, Twine as the sort of main basis to build the Hodge Trail. So it is very, you know, I know coding background before I got into <laughs> building this. So it was a very sort of crash course adventure as I was finishing my dissertation and my advisor was very, you know, <laughs> Not so thrilled that I'm spending more of my time coding this than the writing the dissertation, but I completed both, so <laughs> it's fine. Um, the whole, um, I'll sort of go through some of the aspects of sort of what our goals were. The whole idea, once again, was to build this platform to introduce students to the social history of the Ottoman world through the history of the pilgrimage to Mecca. Uh, present the Hajj as a multifaceted journey. Many pilgrims, they write in their own accounts in the 17th century that some of them are going for religious reasons, some of them are going because Mecca is the largest uh, international trade center in the world at the time because you have pilgrims from Morocco that go to buy things from pilgrims from India and so on and so forth, so cross-cultural exchange, economic reasons for going. People would go on pilgrimage for travel just to see friends because uh, for women in the Islamic world, it becomes one of the main ways in which you find independent women that are allowed to basically able to leave their homes and travel on their own because they're not generally independent merchants, but you can sort of, everyone needs to go incumbent once in their life if they're able to, to go on the pilgrimage to Mecca, so you find lots of women in 
uh, pilgrimage narratives and pilgrimage accounts, and some of them will write, famously a soft Vidi Rani woman writes how she's going also primarily to see her sisters and her friends in other cities along the way, because it's a reason to get and go travel. So not every pilgrim takes the most direct route to Mecca. It's a very dangerous journey. It takes a very long time, and so why not include five other cities <laughs> that are sort of out of the way to go to experience as well. The whole idea is that we wanted to make a free tool, so it's browser-based, it's free to play. Uh, and that's something that as a sort of younger teacher in the field, you encounter, you have all this talk about digital humanities and digital tools to use for teaching, and then all of them are paywalled. And that was something that you know I found very concerning, and I wanted to make something that other people that teach the Ottoman past or the Islamic world could use freely in their classes. And also this way in which the whole idea around this project was to build sort of a digital visualization of the early modern Ottoman world and lots of the themes in it. So we include lots of stories from Evliya Celebi, the Ottoman traveler, stories that were told, different events that happened to you, like the Ottoman and Evliya Celebi, an Ottoman pilgrim and traveler. He has a story about encountering a Bulgarian witch who turns children into ticket chickens. And when you go to Bulgaria in the game and you encounter a story and you hear of it, and there's ways in which we retell these stories to the player so they're being introduced to all these different sources and narratives of the Ottoman world through their journey through this digital landscape. And the target audience is ideally sort of high school and undergraduate students uh, to sort of use this in the classes. And I have lots of friends that have used it all across the world in different places in their classrooms as well already. Uh, let's check the time. <laughs> Um, so the route itself, the main route in the Hajj Trail is Yusuf Rumi's. So the uh, Menesika Hajj, the guide for pilgrimage, uh, showed on the screen there. He's the basis for all the travel times. The times of travel are all based on his uh, 18th century account. And then all the other routes that are filled out of all the other options you can take are based on different travel narratives, uh, pilgrimage narratives um, of other routes that people would take at the time. So you have many options and choices of where you can go and how you want to build your route through it as well. The mechanics or the things that you have in the game, you're managing food, water is especially important and central because that's, as you saw already with the, there, there is no water here quote, that is a sort of central inspiration for what we wanted the game to sort of pass along to students. Um, and also there's money and currency, the Ottoman Akche. There's also the sacred geography of the Ottoman world. So many pilgrims write about how they not only go to Mecca, they're going to all these different shrine sites in all these different cities and will go out of their way to go to different shrine sites of Sufi orders that they're connected to. And so we wanted to represent that because that's represented in the historical narratives. And so we have this variable called TPP, the pilgrim's path, which basically if you do what a historical pilgrim would have done, you get points on this essentially, and then it increases your luck in the random events. That's the only sort of benefit <laughs> we give you from it. Um, we can't give you anything else beyond that in terms of game design. Um, there's imarets, which are, so Ottoman institutions are rents represented in it when you go to different towns and locations. Uh, so imarets are uh, soup kitchens, uh, hammams, bathhouses serve as uh, heal your health, which is how they're used in the Ottoman world as a sort of medicinal places you would go. Um, petitioning, uh, stables, coffeehouse culture is represented. You get different side characters uh, that you can travel along with you. They different, different bonuses that represent different people in the Ottoman world. Uh, there's marketplaces, material culture, and then every single place has a historical quote associated with it. So from a pilgrim or traveler from the ranging from what we could find from the 16th to 19th century, someone who experienced that same place that you, your character is in, how they saw this landscape, how they saw that place around you. So everything, digging up the 300 plus quotes, location specific was a very time intensive <laughs> process, but very educational for me as well. Um, there's an event randomizer for as you go between different cities. Um, there's changing levels of danger, uh, bandits, this is a time of rebellion in the Ottoman Empire as well. Uh, pilgrims talk about getting robbed and banditry as central to their own experiences of the pilgrimage, so that is represented as well in this. You encounter other travelers, other people on the road. Uh, and then you have specific location-based stories as well, um, which I can talk in the about later, <laughs> if you wish, uh, that are some stories that if, if any, I talk to my Ottomanist friends or people that know the sources, they're like, oh, that's a really, good story that was told in the 17th century and I incorporated in some way in different places. So lots of weird, funny anecdotes from the Ottoman past are included in this as well. You can see the whole map of the twine outline of all the, it's very, everything crossing all the lines leading to player death as well at the end. Um, 
There's five characters, there's different events, there's different choices, different secondary objectives. There's player sort of values, so the simulation mechanics. Um, I had an issue early on with the early builds of it that students would just have their side characters in their caravan just die, because they're like, well, that's not me, so why do I care if they are alive? So then we made 45 different characters with actual names and abilities and bonuses, so they give value to the player, so therefore they care that they live. And so it worked. And um, I'm out of time, so you can just, I'll leave with uh, all, we have all the statistics of the basically equals 1,100 pages single space if you print it all of text uh, for this. It's a massive project, and I hope to answer your questions about it in the game, what's it called at the end? Exhibit. Exhibit, yeah. All right, thank you very much. <laughs>